Chapter 2, Reporting Intercorporate Investments and Consolidation of Wholly Owned Subsidiaries with No Differential. This is the core of the course. And um, what we're going to do is chapter 3, 4, and 5 are going to build on this because they're going to deal with other situations where we have partially owned subsidiaries and also where we have a differential. So we're going to start off by talking about wholly owned subsidiaries with no differential and then we're going to talk about differential then we're going to talk about partially owned subsidiaries and then we're going to talk about partially owned subsidiaries with a differential so one chapter is going to build on its other and we're going to on the other and we're going to start with the very simple stuff and then we're going to go to more and more advanced stuff as we move on and um there's a lot of mechanics here of just doing spreadsheets and stuff and um it's a lot of fun Anyway, learning objective 2-1, understand and explain how ownership and control can influence the accounting for investments in common stock. So there are different ways to account for investments, many different ways, primarily what's called the fair value method and then the equity method. And how you account for investments depends on how much control you have. And if you have no control, you're going to use fair value. If you have what's called significant influence, or what you would say is some control, then you're going to use the equity method. And if you have control, which is more than significant influence, if you have control, then you're going to use, then you're going to consolidate. So there's really three different types of accounting here there's fair value accounting for when you have insignificant influence the equity method when you have significant influence but not complete control not control and when you have control you're going to have consolidation now these thresholds are a little bit um require some judgment so what the FASB says is significant influence starts at around 20%, but it's not necessarily 20%. So what it would really be, and we'll talk about this in a few minutes, is a situation where the, in, the company that made the investment has the ability to influence dividends. And you see why that's the critical factor. So if you can influence dividends in some way, then you have what's called significant influence. And that's thought to be around 20%, but it could be more, it could be less. Now, if you have control, we've said before, that would be if you have more than a 50% investment. And it's not necessarily more than 50%. What's key here, first of all, is the voting shares. And if you have some other control that could be contractual, it can be where you can um, access, where you, you really have most of the profits really belong to you or most of the losses really belong to you, if you have more than 50% of the risk, then it's possible that you might also be required to consolidate. So it, both of these 20% and 50% thresholds are um, require some judgment level. And what's really critical is not 20 or 50%, but whether you have significant influence and whether you have control. So when you consolidate, you can really use, consolidation eliminates whatever method you use because what consolidation does, it takes out all the intercompany transactions and you'll see this and it treats the two companies as if they're one. So it's not necessarily, it's not necessary that you use the equity method when you have control. And there are other ways of accounting for it because whatever method you use in your books, to account for it when you consolidate you're going to undo that and you're going to treat the two companies as if they're really one company so that's why we don't say that you have to use the equity method we don't really use fair value at all if you have control um you use something like the cost method which is like fair value but you don't mark it to fair value but whatever it is i mean you have a lot of flexibility on how to account for it if you have control because whatever you do on your books you have to undo when you consolidate so it's not required that you use exactly the equity method. 
And um, what they wrote here is that the cost method is okay, but you don't really know what the cost method is. The cost method is like the fair value method, except you don't mark the investment to market value. Um, but let's go through it one more time because this is very important. And what this does is this, I hope, will help you see how these investments fit in with other investments that you should have learned about in financial reporting or in intermediate accounting. Again, when you have less than 20% or insignificant influence, what do they call it here? Insignificant influence, you're going to carry at fair value. And that's going to be marketable security accounting, where you mark the investment to market. And in some circumstances, that's going to go to the income statement, as you know. In some circumstances, that could go to other comprehensive income, depending on what kind of investment it is, whether it's a trading account security or um, or a more long-term investment. If you have significant influence, then fair value accounting doesn't work anymore. And you use, need to use what's called the equity method. We'll talk about what it is. And again, more than 50%, you're gonna consolidate. What we're gonna learn is we're gonna learn to consolidate with the equity method, but you can also use something called the cost method. So we report these insignificant influence investments at fair value. The equity method works when you have significant influence. It's usually 20%, but what it really means is that you have some control over the invest the dividend policies. And the issue here is that if you have some control over dividend policies, we don't want you using the fair value method. Why not? Because what you could do is you could push the way the fair value method works is that whenever you get a dividend, you have dividend income. So if your fair value investment pays you a dividend, it's dividend income. That's how we account for it. And if you could influence dividends, then you could create income for yourself. So what the FASB said is that if you have an investment and you ha own so much of that investment that you can influence the dividends, then we won't let you use fair value accounting anymore. You have to use the equity method. And under the equity method, as you're going to see in a few minutes, when you receive dividends, you can't record income. And I, under either method, the investment is going to be reported as a single line on the balance sheet. Now, if you have control, that would usually be more than 50%, then you're going to consolidate. And consolidation, as we saw in the last chapter, is, is involved where you take the two companies and you combine them as if they're one company in the financial statements. So you're going to report a single balance sheet, single income statement, single statement of cash flow, single statement of stockholders equity, as if this was all one company. And again, we refer to this as the parent and the subsidiary. Here's a quick question for you. If company A purchases 45% of the outstanding common stock of company B, the investment in company B should be accounted for at fair value, cost, consolidated subsidiary, and equity method investment, or none of the above? Answer is equity method investment. So again, the key numbers here are 20 and 50. Less than 20 is going to be fair value. 20 to 50 is going to be equity method and more than 50% is going to be consolidated.